Editing is hard. It is crazy how much time people spend on editing videos. And by people, I mean me or the version of me before I learned these seven essential hacks that made my editing speed go from this to this. When I first started editing, there was so much to figure out and not because editing is in of itself complicated, but also back then I didn't have as many resources as we have today. And today, even though we have so much available to us in terms of apps and learning and tutorials, things have gotten so much more complex. So it makes sense to get some shortcuts from older people. Let the elderly help you. I'm the elderly. As a beginner, getting into editing can be really complicated and overwhelming. There's a lot that you have to figure out and it is easy to get lost in the details. So today I'm gonna share with you seven essential hacks that I've picked up whilst editing literally thousands of videos over the last 15 years. And stick around till the end because I have an eighth, eighth bonus tip which doesn't have that much to do with editing, but it's the one essential hack that will help you save the most time out of all the hacks. So let's go. Editing involves so many repetitive mechanical movements that you keep doing over and over and over again. None of these movements takes up that much time, but it all adds up and eats into the time you could be using to be creative or getting rejected on Tinder. <laughs> Keyboard shortcuts can drastically reduce the amount of time you spend on these repetitive tasks and can streamline your flow and make you way more efficient in editing. What you can do is identify the functions that you use the most, like split, clip, ripple, delete, cut, paste, etc, and map those functions to keys. For example, I never use the mouse and the cursor to split a clip. I just use the D. <laughs> I said use the D. Yes, I use the D. <laughs> Most editing softwares have their own set of keyboard shortcuts, but I like to customize it. For example, in Premiere, the select tool is V, but it just doesn't make sense with the way that my fingers are, so I changed it to W, and I get to W way faster than to V. So just go into the settings and see what fits, how you feel, and what is more efficient for the way you finger your keyboard. Now, when you do set some keyboard shortcuts, you won't be able to remember them right away. So what I would do is to make a cheat sheet and write them on like a post-it and put it on my screen. And in that way, you keep looking at them and over the course of a few days or weeks, they just get into your psyche and then you can never get them out. And when you use a different software, you're going to keep making those keyboard shortcuts and they won't work and you will suffer. <laughs> Hack number two, gather all your footage, your B-roll, your assets, and your music and put them in one organized folder. When I start editing a project, I try as much as possible to make sure that I have everything in one place. Because when I start the edit, if I have to keep going online to look for music or look for B-roll or whatever, I am going to get distracted. And no matter how much of a focused person you are, having something prepared from the get-go will help you not get distracted. This hack is really important for someone like me who has diagnosed ADHD because the moment I get off track, it is possible that I will stay off track for a moment because I'm like, hey, let's find some B-roll. <gasps> Butterfly, you know, it's like uh, I'm just all over the place. So I'm still learning this. It's a work in progress, but it will save you lots of time. I've actually started treating this hack as its own separate stage of pre-production. Like it is its own to-do task. I have to get everything, absolutely everything that I need. And when it comes to B-roll, I used to just figure it out as I progressed with the edit. But now I've actually started sitting down and thinking, okay, what do I need in this portion? Where do I need B-roll and what B-roll do I need? And then I go online and I find it or I film it and I put it in the folder. Organized B-roll in one place, music in another place, sound effects in a different place. And at the end of the day, my workflow is just so much smoother. Hack number three, use proxies. Proxy Bram, Proxy Jackson, a Prox State Exam. <laughs> 
What is a proxy? A proxy is a lower resolution, lower quality version of a video file. It uses much less processing power and takes up much less space. So if you don't have a super fast iMac professional, whatever computer, which most of us do not, using a proxy file will help you edit just as fast as if you had a supercomputer. Using proxies involves first creating these proxies when you import them into the project. Most editing apps have an option that lets you create proxies. What happens is that the proxy is created and it is stored beside the real file. And while you're editing, the software reads the lower resolution file. But when you render it, then it takes the information from the high quality file. So your final render is the highest quality, but you've been able to edit completely fluidly and smoothly because you are using the lower resolution file. Using proxies is not only good for a computer, but it's also good for your creativity because if everything's working smoothly and there's no lag in the timeline, then you will have the creative bandwidth to actually try stuff instead of waiting for a little piece to render. Hack number four, the Ken Burns effect. Ken Burns. Ken is so hot, he burns. Oh. So the Ken Burns effect is nothing fancy. It's just slight movement. You know when you're watching documentaries and they're showing you pictures of the crime scene and the pictures are kind of like moving or zooming in or zooming out? That's called the Ken Burns effect because Ken Burns was a famous documentary maker who used that effect a lot. I don't think he actually invented it. But yeah, we call it the Ken Burns effect and I use it everywhere. Actually, if you watch carefully, you can notice that I am slowly zooming in. Ah! And I do this all through all my videos. It's very subtle, but it does something. And basically my rule is that I do not have static shots. All my shots are moving in one way or the other, and sometimes in two ways. So using this, kind of adds a subliminal, subconscious feeling of dynamism to your shots. And you can also get creative and do two types of movement at the same time, like, you know, zooming in and panning to the left. Just knock yourself out. Just don't knock the shot out of the frame. You can do these effects in most editing apps just by using simple keyframes. In Adobe Premiere, I use the transform tool because it also adds a little bit of motion blur, even though I don't think it's that visible at this speed. But in CapCut, you can simply use keyframes and uh, in DaVinci, yeah, you can also use keyframes. One thing I use the Ken Burns effect quite often for is guiding the attention to a certain place in the shot. If I have a picture where the subject is somewhere to the side, rather than just zoom into the picture as a whole, I'm gonna zoom in and pan to where I want the viewer's attention to go. Hack number five, L cuts, J cuts, jump cuts. An L cut is one where the audio from a previous scene continues over the start of the next scene. And it's called an L cut because it looks like an L. Basically, it helps the audio transition smoothly from the last scene into the next scene and it kind of ties both scenes in together. A J cut is where the audio from the next scene starts while the current scene is still playing. This type of cut helps to anticipate what's coming next. So you kind of start hearing it before it happens. It's used a lot in movies to help in transitions over time and space, but in talking head videos like this one, it's used to help the monologue sound more connected in such a way that it feels like ideas flow from one to the next in a seamless way, making the viewer pay attention even more because there are no breaks in the ideas. A jump cut is an abrupt transition between different shots of the same subject. <coughs> <laughs> Jump cuts are a really good way of uh, speeding up activities. Let's say I'm filming myself um, unpacking some groceries. Rather than speed it up and make it look like, you know, chip monkey, I would use jump cuts to show how many items I've actually bought without watching me put my hand in the bag and bring it out and do it all over again and take it to the fridge and, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, jump cuts. Sometimes, especially in talking head videos like these, jump cuts can be quite sudden. And that is why I always zoom in or zoom out. When I zoom in, 
that's me hiding a jump cut. Another way to hide a jump cut is by using some B-roll or some graphics over it. There are loads of times when I didn't actually plan B-roll or graphics, but I just put something there because I really wanted to hide a jump cut that did not look good. Hack number six, use LUTs. What are LUTs? Check out this video to learn about LUTs. Basically, in a nutshell, LUTs are like filters, but where filters go over an image, LUTs go into an image and change the DNA of the image. So the colors that you get and the changes that you get with LUTs can be way more vibrant and you can go further away from the original footage than if you had just put a filter on it. But using a LUT is not as simple as the way you use a filter in the software. Where using a lot actually requires you to film in a certain way usually in log you need to film in log rather than in rec 709 I explained it all in this video how do LUTs make my editing faster here's the workflow I have a Sony camera I film in s log and I have a conversion LUT for s log to rec 709 if I film with the Sony in the S-Log profile and I expose correctly for the S-Log profile and I apply that LUT, I will get the same results no matter what. And I don't have to think about it. I don't have to do color correction. I don't have to do any grading unless I wanna do something creative like the teal and orange look or if I wanna make someone's skin blue or something. I know this is a little bit more complicated and it's less about LUTs and more about filming in log, but there are times when I've shot in a standard picture profile and I've spent so much time trying to fix the exposure and trying to fix things that couldn't really be fixed so I had to patch them. Using a lot makes you think things through from the start and you will get more consistent results all the time. I made a video about how to apply LUTs in different software, check it out. And the seventh but not the final hack is push through. Just push through. Set a goal for your editing session and hit it. Define what you want to achieve in each editing session. You have three hours, decide. I am gonna do this, this, and this in these three hours, and I am not going to give up until I finish it. When I was first starting out, I used to have this rule for myself. I will not stand up until I complete one minute of this video. When I have bigger editing tasks, which are maybe not that stimulating and I get bored, I say to myself, I have two choices. I either edit or I take a break, nothing else. I don't check my phone, I don't watch TV, I don't eat. I edit or I don't edit. And in this way, you kind of keep your brain hostage because editing is better than doing nothing. That's how my brain works. And I just mentioned big editing projects. Well, when you have something that's really big, break it down and then treat those breakdowns as their own tasks and stay on them and stay on them until you finish. If you find yourself procrastinating, remember two choices, edit or do nothing, edit or do nothing, and you will edit. When you push through these moments, you're gonna build resistance and grit, and you're gonna set the precedent that even when you don't feel like doing it, you do do it. And now the bonus hack, which for me is the biggest time saver. You know, when you're editing and you really like what you're editing and then you like go back and you see like a funny thing that you did and you laugh and like, oh my God, I'm so funny. Mm -hmm. And then you go back and you're editing it and you're like, you know, maybe I could just shift that a little bit. And then you go back and you edit it and then you go back and then you edit it and then you go back and then you go back and then you go back. You keep going back and you keep watching it and you keep watching it because it's fun. It's fun because there's dopamine released because you like like it. So basically, you are binging on yourself in that moment. Stop. Stop that. <laughs> I actually learned this not too long ago because, you know, I do a lot of funny things and I, I think I am hilarious. Shut up. And if you were to calculate how much time I spend going back and watching myself, it is just an unhealthy amount of time spent looking at myself being an idiot. And that is time that I can spend being an idiot in front of someone else live. So edit and move on. You can come up with a system where you allow yourself to re-watch the edit only when you've reached a certain stage. Also, you can just save the detailed reviews for the end. Be confident in your cuts and then at the end you can come back 
and go through it again. Even when it's not videos of myself, when I've like shot a music video, I really, really love what I do. And it's not like I'm, I'm looking at it going, wow, I made a really good thing. No, I'm like, wow, I can't believe I did that. I love that, it looks great. I don't know how, because I did not go to school for this and I'm amazed that I actually didn't mess up. So those are seven essential hacks that I think are good to know. Of course, there are tons and tons and tons of other things that you should know and you never stop learning and you will get faster and faster. If you have any other hacks that you know about or things that you've discovered for yourself, then please pop them in the comments because I never stop learning. I am constantly looking for ways to make myself better even though it's really hard to improve on perfection. And if you want to learn more about more content creation stuff, watch one of these videos.